and Elaine Schreiber are names well known in Wisconsin as governor and first lady of our state in the late 1970s. He has a lot of experience with wins and losses in Wisconsin politics, but Marty Schreiber is now living through his most excruciating loss of all. He wants to help millions of others who are touched by Alzheimer's disease. It's a journey of true love and harsh reality that is, has inspired his heartfelt book. It's called My Two Elaines, Learning, Coping, and Surviving as an Alzheimer's Caregiver. Governor Shriver, welcome to Live at Four. It's so well, nice to, to see, see you. you again. It's good to be here, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Well, this thank might you. be your most important campaign of all. Why did you decide to write this book? Well, I, if Alzheimer's is bad, ignorance of the disease is worse. And I don't mean ignorance as it relates to how the brain works. I mean ignorance of the disease by caregivers, the medical profession, employers. And the fact of the matter is also we go one step further and say rather than worrying about the storm to pass, to try and learn how to dance in the rain. The point of the matter is this disease is so devastating and we, we I did not, there are some things that I learned too late. There are some things I didn't learn soon enough. And because of that, I deprived my wife of moments of joy. And I also deprived myself of being the best caregiver and also even the best father and the best grandfather. Because as I traveled this caregiver's path, it affected my life, my attitude, my psychology, and, and, and my health. And so I said, I've got to do something to help other people be aware of what this journey is like. And I had looked at all kinds of books about Alzheimer's and great ones on the technical aspects and what you should do here and there, but never a book which laid out the harsh reality. And I wish that that would have happened for me. I don't like it. It's a harsh reality. But knowing that it is so harsh, but knowing that I might be able to do things to ease the anxiety and, and, and the worry and the concern of my loved one. When did you first know something was going wrong? Well, uh, Elaine, is, um, we go back 14 years uh, plus two years. So uh, 16 years ago was when she's a terrific cook and she once made a meal for a guest that was just horrible. She would back out of the garage and she would scrape the side of the car. She had worked as a day uh, uh, school teacher a daycare teacher for 10 years and she got lost going to and from and so I didn't I, I, I picked up a little bit because that was odd uh, but then finally our family physician said we better get Elaine tested and then that goes back 14 years ago and that's when she was was diagnosed she was how old when she was diagnosed? 65 65 years old and um, I, I, I wish uh, and I wish that the medical profession would have sat me down and said look at you know this this is sort of what you're going to be in for and and here's where you can get help for example the Alzheimer's Association and I wish they also would have told me no matter how good you think you are you need help you can't do it alone and so that's really a, a strong message message that I'd like to send out and we're really not making many medical advances in the, the treatment of this and the de detection well that's that's the problem we've got the detection we understand and we can see and experience people who are who are going through this disease but as far as advancement and being able to identify how we can maybe stop the spread of this disease there's nothing yet going and people say well how about clean living well I'll never deprive anyone the right to believe in clean living and so forth and that's probably the only thing that people at this moment can grab onto as being a possible hope to delay or prevent the disease your first Elaine was love at first sight. You met her when you were 14 years old, is that 14 right? 14 years of age, and, and uh, I knew right away that she was the love of my life. And, and uh, I, uh, well, then, uh, you know, we dated, we went steady, we, uh, we, we got married, and we have four children, and 13 grandchildren, and five. Uh, my best friend, my companion, if I would run for office, she would be my best campaign supporter, and if I would lose, she would never let me feel defeated. And the second Elaine is the Elaine who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and I began to, to see that change, and, and I didn't want to let go. Is that part of your message, that you have to let go of the person that they were to embrace who they are? Uh, that's a very important point, uh, to, and, and it's hard. But I have to point out that it's important to do that because the person who once was is no more. 
And now we are entering into a person who's brand new and, and who's changed and so forth. And so I finally concluded the importance of not only letting go, but joining her world. And if, if you can envision a funnel and you hold a small, small part by your eye and you look up and you can see the blueness of the sky and the hope of tomorrow. In an Alzheimer's patient, what happens, that funnel becomes inverted and now the large part is by their eye and all they see is a small, that's their life in front of them. Not five minutes from now, not five minutes ago, but that's their, and so unless you join their world, it's a lot of pain, anxiety, and frustration, both for the person who is ill as well as for the caregiver. So, um, Elaine, the other day, uh, we're having lunch, and she started to cry. I said, why are you crying? She said, well, I'm beginning to love you more than my husband. Well, I didn't ask her what's wrong with your turkey husband. I didn't <laughs> do that. But the point of the matter is our lives were touching, and I did not get involved in trying to convince her, you know, I really am your husband. No, that's not important. Uh, once she asked me how my parents are, and I said, well, they're both dead. Well, the shock on her face when she realized that her parents had died and maybe she didn't go to the funeral, you know, maybe she didn't attend to them. Now she has, I see, your parents are both very happy. Your mom's at church, she likes working there, your dad loves her sports. Oh, she said, that makes me so happy. And that's therapeutic fibbing. If I would have thought about therapeutic fibbing 59 years ago when I first got married, or when I was running for office back there in 1978 or 1982, can you imagine? But anyway, to join the world of the person and... And to take care of yourself. That's well, the biggest theme of your book. Because it'll kill you if you mm -hmm. don't. Oh, it's... It, as an Alzheimer's caregiver, you have a better chance of dying quicker, becoming sicker, uh, losing your, uh, your, your, your savings, having an impact on retirement than caregivers for any other disease. Because what, what happens is... You try so hard to do your best, but because a disease is regressive, as, as you do your best, you wake up the next morning and you're three paces backwards. Mm -hmm. So you're frustrated and you're discouraged because you, you, you want to help this person, but it, it doesn't work that way. And, and, so. and I think we're all going to be affected one way or the other yes. by this as the epidemic gets worse. My two Elaine's is the story governor. Thanks for sharing. It's a powerful message. It's such I think. important work. It really well, is. Thank you very much. For being with and us. you're so inspiring. I mean, this is what it's all about. This well, is what true love really is. Yeah. You're in it for the long haul. Well, it's thank very you. inspiring. Yeah. Thanks again, Governor. Good to see you. Thank you. We'll be right back with the final check of your forecast.